good morning again uh, to invited speaker uh, my respected colleagues and dear participants uh, myself dr chetna modi associate professor of anand pharmacy college welcomes you all on the third day of atal sponsored e faculty development program on design thinking principle in pharma product development a fresh look towards innovation organized by anand pharmacy college someone said that gaining knowledge is the first step of wisdom and sharing it is the first step to humanity and we gather on this platform to achieve both the things that is wisdom and humanity uh, let me give uh, give brief of today's schedule uh, today we have three sessions and all these three sessions are related to expand our knowledge of the design thinking towards pharma so first session is by mr rohit swarup sir who is design thinker and founder explora irf amdabad and uh, his title is design thinking neat and research approach for pharma second session is by mr karmjit c bihola sir who is founder inodesk design innovation services amdabad on title of design thinking ideation and conceptualization and third session is by prabuling junja sir who is certified design thinking expert and coach pune and his topic of discussion is design thinking prototyping and testing so starting from our first session let me introduce our first speaker of the third day uh, that is uh, mr rohit swarup sir who is design thinker and founder explora irf amdabad Uh, Mr Rohit Swarup sir has a bachelor degree in mechanical engineering and PG diploma in business management and pursuing PhD in design intervention of K12 he is recipient of two national awards a uh, shiksha bharti puraskar and indian leadership award for educational excellence he is working with various state governments in india china and canada on projects related to an education and innovation ecosystem creation in the areas of management technology and design a regular guest at doordarshan tv programs on digital media design and innovation he is also a jury member and actively involved in academic as well as consultancy assignments with prominent institutions such as nid and iim ahmedabad he is also founder chairman of innovation and research foundation carrying out education and consulting work in the area of innovation and design in usa australia china india and sri lanka he is also founder of explora design school india's premier digital media design education company having numerous campuses in india and china founder director uh, futurs explored implementing design subject culture zones and lab in 2000 plus schools in several countries today sir will be discussing on the topic of design thinking need and research approach for the pharma so now i request rohit swarup sir to start the session over to you sir yeah thank you chetna bin uh, and thank you hardik bhai and i greatly appreciate uh, uh our institute uh, to having initiated such a wonderful uh, program uh it's uh, in current context if we think about uh, the kind of uh, scenario we are in uh the online method is one of the best uh, uh, in order to get in touch with as well as contribute towards uh, the ecosystem and what more then uh, healthcare and pharma that's the need of the time so i would uh, congratulate uh, the institution uh, that uh, you have initiated such a wonderful uh, program uh, and very very uh, appropriately timed so with that friends uh, because it's a one and a half hour session and uh, design thinking uh, in any context is more about doing and uh, so having said uh, that uh to accomplish the session in uh, uh, something like um, one and a half hour is like uh, playing uh, instead of t20 it would be i would say something like a t10 so i would request all of you to be a little attentive uh, because it's going to pass out so fast because of the time uh, space so uh, 
uh, once again welcome all the participants i hope uh, you find today's session meaningful uh, so where we begin this session friends is that because i'm sure this is the third day so and i love to interact with you to know a little more of uh, what you have uh, been able to achieve in this time so let's begin with the first question uh, and of course by the way i also happen to be a faculty and academician so as all academicians like you and uh, uh, everyone uh, we are fond of asking questions so so let us begin by the first question and uh, just feel free to answer whatever comes to your mind so the first question is um, since you have already encountered two days on this topic i would wish to know that how much are we uh, grounded in design thinking so a straight question what do you think is design thinking uh, anyone can answer the, and don't worry it can be uh, you can put it on the chat because if we answer by uh, voice i think it will become chaotic so uh, please feel free to write it on the chat uh, and uh, let's begin let's see who will be the sachin tendulkar for today's session uh, yeah open uh, uh, friends to your answers what do you think is design thinking and if someone is in big rush and catches the mic first feel free to answer by also interacting straight away yes friends what do you think is design thinking and there is no correct one answer very nice so hardik bhai has of course as usual been the sachin for uh, so design thinking is concept of ideation to marketability of product it's cognitive excellent uh usman gani bhai very good uh, avni it's creative thinking very good can we have couple of more answers because uh, i'm sure that uh, each one of us has our own perspective over the last two days having listened to gupta ji as well as some of the prominent speakers i'm sure innovation solution to problems okay to design by understanding user need uh, uh mithil transformation of idea strategically into specific outlook creative problem solving wonderful so i think broadly you have covered so at least i am happy that uh, we are grounded customer centric uh, products very nice so i think all your answers are correct uh, uh, so uh, in order to save time let us also uh, um, let me ask the second question also and then i'll try to answer both of these uh, in my understanding in context of the pharma industry uh, so this session today is i believe completely focused on pharma and healthcare and therefore my entire answer to design thinking will be uh, in that context so friends the next question uh, first one i think uh, all of you as group have answered it uh, completely correct but i would have a little different take on it so i'll share that the second is why do you think pharma industry needs design thinking i mean we are spending 5 days friends uh, and that's a lot of time and resource it's extremely important for us to uh, know that why do we think we need design thinking because one yes it's a very fashionable word uh everyone uh, today is talking about design thinking but uh, let me hear from some of you why do you think you, you need design thinking specifically you uh, because you are the people who are carrying out day and uh, day and night work with a healthcare ecosystem very nice so uh, chetna ji has mentioned patient centric treatment wonderful in fact if we look at the real profession of medicine Uh, and the whole uh, uh, philosophy of design uh, if we look at it it has a very very close connection with the way the patients are being diagnosed and treated uh, in fact medicine is one of the oldest professions where i would say design thinking was really applied uh, because the first step is knowing uh, what does the person and that to individual not a group of people but what does an individual need is what are their pain and what are the symptoms and how they come about so i would say as natural extension uh, all of uh, you who are practicing doctors or are teaching 
uh, uh, it comes very naturally. So design thinking uh, at the onset, I would congratulate each one of you that you've been using it for ages. Uh, only thing is now it has come as a, a big terminology again to remind us that what need to be the good practices that we need to follow. No, but uh, so here are some answers. Let's see. Improve appearance of product. So uh, uh, Darshan Bhai, please uh, just keep that sentence with you. We will, when I address about design thinking, I, we will touch upon this. And if I forget, just please remind me later in the session. Uh, improve appearance of the product. Okay, wonderful. Improve the quality and safety of drugs with saving time and money. Very good uh, points there. When you say saving time and money, how does that happen? So today we will try to see the first part you know, because I'm taking the first part, which is the problem finding area. And therefore, I can cover that bit. My friends later would cover how can you save time and money by using design thinking. Okay. Increase uh, patient compliance. Okay, very nice. That's also true. Uh, very nice. I think two of people have responded almost similar. Improve thinking for pharma and creative different knowledge. Creative different knowledge. Okay, very nice. Tailored product as per the changing demands. Wonderful. In, in fact, I'm sure some of you are familiar. We are working with a project where we are trying to customize the medicine to be given to a patient specifically in the mental health care being by actually 3D printing the quantity of medicine needed to be delivered. So right now we have a general medication of 5 mg, 10 mg, 15 mg and so. Uh, but if I want to administer 3 mg, how do I do that? So can I 3D print a medicine and give it to the patient right on the desk of a doctor so the person doesn't even have to go to uh, a shop to buy the medicine? That's, friends, where the world is moving and where when somebody has just said that customizing the treatment to the extent of personalization to individuals. In fact, uh, India has the uh, oldest uh, uh, history of medical treatment where it was so customized to each person uh, before uh, the advent of the Western medication. Because if you look at the whole method of Ayurveda, uh, it is so personalized to seeing the pulse of individual and then uh, seeing what an individual is suffering, not as a general thing. So it is not that when we go to a hospital uh, uh, that we are said, oh, this is a common cold. So common cold even may have 10 variations as we are seeing in current situation. How does that impact a person sitting in Anand and how differently will it impact a person sitting in a more moist climate as Bombay or a dry climate as Delhi? Now would be variations and therefore uh, uh, how do we... Uh, use this whole concept of design thinking. So I'm happy that uh, many of you have answered uh, to some extent the usefulness. So now let me come to the session and give you a little bit about my perspective of uh, you know, what I think is design thinking. And uh, I hope you are able to see the screen. It's just, I think, appearing. Yeah. So uh, let's begin here design thinking. So uh, I would uh, have a little different take on design thinking in the sense uh, I'll take the original definition of design thinking and would like to little bit answer the whole uh, situation in these three through these three circles. Uh, friends, I would suggest that uh, these are the three circles which I think if you uh, want to answer anyone about design thinking, these are the three things that we need to uh, definitely be aware. The first is design thinking is a highly uh, human centric or citizen centric or a person centric approach. Therefore, it, it begins with what does a person require? So even when we do a system study, we still keep the people at the center of it. So it is the study of a user 
and therefore when we talk about that we also want to dig deeper uh, we want to know the emotions and feelings of people and what do they experience when uh, they go through uh, any healthcare treatment or medication in that context or if we look at a larger ecosystem how would uh, people be impacted by the different uh, programs that the government launches in the healthcare how is it that the people want to uh, feel or uh, the emotion have emotions when they interact with the infrastructure that has been created around the healthcare industry so the key of design thinking and the very starting point is the human need that is right at the center once we have understood the human need and we have found that oh this is the need or this is the pain or gain uh in that context the next step that we take is uh what kind of a technology and don't please misunderstand technology as uh, it technology is also technique uh so sometimes the way we treat a person a technique a way of diagnosis is also a technology it's a technique when we bring a change in that we are saying that we are making a change in the process or the technology or technique so the first part is understanding the human need the second part that we are going to cover about is the technological feasibility so when we talk about technological feasibility we are talking about what kind of technology or technique exist that i can provide as a solution to uh, the problem that i have identified so first the human need second what kind of technology or technique do i provide in order to satisfy or fulfill the need and therefore the word here is feasibility because if i say there are many like let's look at the current situation when we look at the current situation who would not have wanted a vaccine in within the first month but if we look at the whole process of creation of a vaccine uh it has it's a technology at one end it's a technique how it is to be developed how it has to be administered in order to check the safety and therefore we talk about feasibility so when we talk about feasibility there are many methods i'm sure uh, uh, you have come across in the same treatment that is being given today to patients there are different lines of treatment when we look at these these are what these are techniques or technology the problem that we are addressing we have identified now we are using different techniques there could be a different level of success for each technique and therefore we say which one is the most feasible so in design thinking the first thing is human need second is what technique or technology uh, is feasible for it and there sometime it is multi level feasibility that there are as we can see in current time we have a treatment that's plasma based treatment we have a treatment that is medicine based treatment we have a treatment that is also being provided by holistic uh, well being centers uh, for the same ailment and then of course we are saying that we will have a vaccine for the same so there could be a different level of solutions that come out so identifying the human need iterating it that's the circle iterating it against what technology solution is possible that is feasible and third is the impact like for example even after the, many of you must have heard in current times that we are talking about what would be the success ratio or the impact ratio for the different vaccines some are saying it will be at 50% some are saying it will be 94% some are saying 95% uh, that's when we talk about the impact of the uh, treatment that we or uh, the service that we will be providing so when we look at design thinking if you look at it carefully the success of design thinking is because it is this constant iteration between what a person needs technologically what is feasible or technique wise and if we look at the viability of the impact it can be a financial viability it can also be the impact viability uh so for example financial viability is very very uh, straightforward that uh, if we are looking at a vaccine that is going to cost uh, uh, a very very large amount of money then it will become a challenge even for the government to procure it for the citizens so what design thinking says 
whenever we use this uh, approach of design thinking uh, we iterate very quickly human need technological feasibility and impact viability in terms of finance or the overall impact of the solution when you repeatedly do this whole process the kind of answers that we start getting are the ones that are more feasible and appropriate for the citizen that's the reason rohit sir your your voice is coming sir your mic is muted sir clearly i hope uh, that uh, we have got this clearly uh, in our perspective so uh, my request can anyone put it on the chat quickly that what do you think are the three components of design thinking because every topic you know like six sigma i'll touch upon that little later but uh, every topic has its essence and if we have understood the essence of it you can construct the entire thing quickly so what do you think are the three key parameters of design thinking quickly friends yeah what do you think would be the three parameters of design thinking yeah anyone uh, we have looked at the three circles uh, so what do you think would be the three parameters <laughs> wonderful uh, hardik bhai is correct but that comes second the first th and the foremost that's important is uh in yes that's correct so uh, desirability the human need is the first uh uh nagori bhai uh, you are also correct but i would want to go by the because when we discuss about definition let's stick to uh, the core because if we have understood this clearly yes uh, uh, suroja uh, uh, it's completely correct but in the other way human need is first and as all doctors and practitioners i'm sure the first thing comes is what's a human need then comes the technological feasibility whether it is there and then comes the impact viability so desirability feasibility and viability okay now let's move on uh, with so i hope this part is clear and please do remember because the, if we know this then you know the foundation of design thinking so that's the first component let's now move to the uh, second one which is very interesting for all of us and the moment we talk about design thinking uh, we say what is design thinking as an approach so i would call design thinking uh, as a project management approach some of you when you are doing a project with the students it could be a research project or it could be a developmental project uh, in that case design thinking can be treated as a project management tool so if you look at design thinking uh, there are several ways in which design thinking can be uh, put out as a structure uh, some of the very common structures that have uh, prevailed since quite some time uh, have been uh, first we empathize then we we define a problem then we idea generate ideas we prototype and test but i would like to take it little different for the pharmacy and healthcare sector therefore i would like to use the model here of understand as the first step and the simple reason to do that is uh, understanding the environment and the context in which we are creating the solution and the reason for that is very simple and clear that if you see the current situation we have to be extremely contextual in creating of the medicine in the kind of requirement so something which used to take as clinical research for almost 10 years now as you can see some of the best uh, pharmacy or uh, uh, organizations in the world 
are doing it in less than an year's time. And that's the context and therefore understanding uh, the scenario and the context is the first step. The second, of course, is observe. And that up to this three, we will be uh, picking up in my session today. Uh, then post the session, you will uh, uh, encounter the other three stages uh, of design thinking. So therefore, I would say design thinking at first level is the three circles, human need, technological feasibility, business viability. If we look at in terms of steps, design thinking begins, therefore, with understand, that is understanding the context and environment. And then it goes on to what is a human need. So I try to find out the human need by observing and creating some point of view. OK, so that's one of the approach here. Now, if we look at this, as I'm sharing some of the models because as faculty members, you will uh, encounter many times different models of design thinking. So just to familiarize you that it's not much different. It's only that the previous one was uh, vertical. This one is horizontal. It almost means similar if you look at the situation. It is. It starts with this point here, a question, vision, or statement of intent. Like, for example, if you want to come out with a new drug or a new treatment or a new process or some improvement in the uh, systems and processes or creating a new medical device, that's the starting point. And that is why here we begin with understand. So once we begin here, we understand uh, the overall situation and then come to this step, uh, step uh, that who all are involved in this. And therefore, we use the term stakeholders uh, because there are multiple stakeholders in the healthcare ecosystem. So mapping who's involved, the stakeholders, then, of course, understanding the stakeholders in the real situation they are in. From there, we try to understand the and create certain themes that what is coming out by our understanding, what kind of inferences can we make. In the, at the same time, we also look at understanding uh, ca uh, ca uh, causal influences, which are the core when we look at the users or the core uh, person that who's the main stakeholder for whom we are creating. Uh, we look at those requirements and we also look at the requirements of the other stakeholders and the uh, environment. Sometimes we also try to dig deeper because what appears to our eye may be just a symptom. We need to get and who more than you all would know that there is a difference between, of course, a symptom and a problem that exists. Therefore, this is the part that today I will be talking about uh, in my session. Uh, the third part I want to touch about, and this all we are discussing is what is design thinking. So if we uh, again quickly recap, design thinking is human need. First finding the need, then technological uh, feasibility of the solution, and then the business or impact viability. This iteration is design thinking. If we look at the steps, we're talking understand as the first step, and then we say observe, and then I would like to put empathy at the third step and then uh, creating a hypothesis what is the problem statement that we have created for the same that's the uh, the stages now we come to the next part that design thinking is also very useful when we talk about our research uh, because whenever we begin a research for a drug or creating any kind of a uh, change in the current system we begin with a mystery in mind we look at a overall situation and try to understand the situation. Our role in design thinking is to take that mystery and create it into some kind of heuristic, something that we can be familiar with, some understanding that we generate through the system. And having done that, these two stages, then we try to solve. So if you can see, it's the problem finding and the problem solving. So right now we are today's this session is on problem finding post this it will be problem solving. Okay, now uh, let me quickly take you through why I think design thinking is greatly needed for the healthcare uh, sector. The first at the policy level. So some of you must be dealing with policy level issues and larger ecosystem. 
and when i work with the uh, the, the niti aayog or miti uh, ministry of uh, electronics and it the first thing that we really look at in any kind of uh, existing system is this is what is the system that used to prevail that we used to frame a policy then we used to create processes around it then systems and then we used to go to the users uh, that is the citizens or the stakeholders and get their views and then uh, we used to iterate about it and see that okay the implementation of policy is there however if you look at the last two decades this has completely shifted on its head uh now what we are saying and uh, several ministries have taken this approach and of course singapore leads in this uh, singapore and uk are two of the pioneers in this whole uh, approach change that has come about and therefore they are saying that the whole new approach for this policy framing and in the healthcare sector or uh, medicine as a domain should be users at the first so users then service design or redesign because healthcare is an evolved system and now we are seeing with technology infusion further uh, changes happening therefore design or redesign of it then comes the system development so if you see it has been turned on its head and that is why design thinking is useful because when the user becomes at the core we need a methodology to serve the same and then of course you see policy and feedback so that's the first reason for policy makers i think why design thinking could be a very useful tool the second one is that as such the healthcare system involves a large group of diverse stakeholders there are many stakeholders in the whole process of uh, healthcare management and when there are many stakeholders we need to address the need of each stakeholder so therefore if you now remember the first word that comes up is it's a human centric begins with human need desirably human need therefore stakeholders and the requirement of each stakeholder the second is there is a changing requirement in the healthcare system there is no static thing that we can be sure about that it is going to be this way forever it is constantly in a flux and with more advent of technology and the advancements we are seeing changing citizen requirement therefore we need an approach that can address the same then of course shifting benchmark as new drugs come in uh, we tend to uh, improve upon the method of treatment change the method of treatment and therefore the benchmarks that are set are also shifting uh, the fourth is the outcomes are sometimes elusive and i'm sure most of you would agree that because there are so many variables in the treatment uh, or in uh, designing a healthcare policy that the outcomes sometimes tend to be wicked and we call these as designers wicked problem problems that when we try to solve they again slip out of our hand those are the kind of problem because they are um, um, multi uh, stakeholder complex dynamics of the problem and therefore sometimes the outcomes are elusive the next of the three are of course very evident that uh, we need a high level of transparency in whatever research and whatever work we are doing in healthcare so we need an approach that brings transparency and the first which one of our good friends had stated in the chat that the cost of development is very high how can we reduce that kind of a risk of research and using a methodology so the second reason the first reason was the policy reason now it is user centric the second reasons i find are these challenges that has brought about design thinking at the main core of it and the third part i would say is uh, many of you must be familiar with six sigma so what six sigma did for the quality movement which said that if we follow the six sigma process we are able to reduce the errors beyond a certain uh, level so 0.03 uh, we have to reduce the errors there and that six sigma works wonderful when we talk about the quality movement but when the movement goes on to innovation and i'm sure many of you are uh, seeing in our daily lives that 
nowadays we don't talk about quality of a service or a product because we understand that quality will be available it has to be there that level of quality so now the challenge before the world is innovation so as the past two decades of a uh, uh, mid 80s to mid 90s and mid 90s to uh, 2005 or so was a movement of quality now the whole movement is a movement of innovation and therefore we need an approach which addresses innovation so that's the three reasons friends that i would cite that why we need design thinking in healthcare now looking at a quick example because many of you would fail uh, say that this is all theory uh, where is the practical and reality for the same so if you see here on the screen friends and if you read through uh, and i'm sure you're familiar with this organization all of you in some way or the other would have worked with them or their products if you see what they have to say uh, and if i was to cite some of the things customer centric ideas so customer centric is human centric ideas could come from anyone it could come from developers of medication it could come from designers sales people or researchers that's what they say therefore it is understood that the expertise alone could not be enough for a sustainable culture of innovation at pfizer therefore what they came about is innovation with regard to developing new drugs has always been the core part of the success of uh, their business that uh, yeah if we look at the heart and i think that is the role that our nation can play now that can we play, give an emphasis to developing new drugs uh, because that's where uh, the game changers will be what's new for our organization is a focus on innovation beyond drug development so just pay attention to this focus on innovation beyond drug development how do we innovate our business model so uh, and i'll touch upon a little bit very quickly on that how do we innovate our business partnerships so when we are doing research can we collaborate with different organizations in the world I like to give you a very quick example uh, we have our studio in amdabad and many a times organizations as i uh, you must have heard in my introduction we do projects with organizations with iims or the other organization where they bring about a problem related to healthcare domain and therefore as a specialist in design thinking we work with them which was not heard before why would uh, a uh, uh, super specialized area of uh, uh, medicine creation or healthcare treatment uh, have something to do with the design oh. studio but it's the process that we use to create a medical device or a service which they find very meaningful therefore uh, that's where we are talking about creating different business models how do we innovate our business partnerships and how do we look to op uh, operate the company in a different way that somebody from pfizer is saying so but look at the next one which is equally important for us as an institution so as an pharmacy college i think this part is very good can we develop a competitive advantage by using so if we see industry experts or the opinion that incorporating design thinking into the business model pfizer has truly been able to differentiate itself so that is where friends is the impact of design thinking we are seeing in uh, some of the organization so i would uh, and here are some uh, examples i will not touch much upon it because of time but i'll just take you through quickly through uh, some of these examples uh, so if you may read through here is an whole uh, a hospital healthcare center and service that has been transformed uh, in this manner if you can see they cut down the patient waiting time by 40% simply by reorganizing the structure of the services so they looked at the location of the consulting rooms and improved communication between the different departments and simplifying medical processes of course this is a big case study if some of you are interested uh, i'll have a open invitation that you are welcome we can discuss and share these uh, what we are discussing today 
Uh, but uh, if you see the impact of design thinking, uh, reorganize it, it reduces the patient waiting time by 40%. And in a country like our, that is one of the biggest challenges that we face. And of course, they did the electronic queue and those things. And leading to that is one of the projects that uh, is very dear to me also is our e-hospital. If we look at this, currently uh, the uh, Digital India movement and uh, uh, some of the good friends there, uh, we uh, are tr trying to work out a method that how can we take the healthcare services and make it so very easy and simplified for people that can you access uh, within two clicks on the mobile uh, the service that you want to uh, avail. So can we make the whole process so very simple and easy? Therefore, uh, some of you who must have seen the Pfizer example and this may have thought, how is it impacting in our country? So this is a straight example of how design thinking is being used today in making the services simple and easy uh, for the citizens. So that's an example close to our home. And of course, uh, this I want to touch upon just for a quick time because many of you must be and your students must, must be working upon uh, creating using technology or IOT in order to create devices and systems. So if you see a solution here, uh, many a times uh, 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 testing for uh, sugar level uh, in when a person is outside and in an office or moving, it became a little cumbersome thing because it uh, people used to be a little shy about how do I test within when others are around me and uh, you know, it, one feels a little bit off and so one would go in a corner and then uh, do the test and uh, then the second part is how do I send that uh, information. So here is a project that was done where if you see the kind of device they have created is such an interesting, uh, good looking and a sophisticated design that now people are not uh, concerned about even uh, using it. Like you see the wearable devices, the fitness devices that have come about, the whole method of in which we have taken the whole approach of putting the band or it making looking good and uh, it's become fashionable. So how does this whole method of where certain diseases and certain things where people take it in a very uh, serious manner can be made less serious and simplified as well as easy to use is with this example. And connecting it, of course, to the uh, straight away the platform. Uh, so the moment we connect the entire thing to a platform, the whole information goes out. Yeah, the whole information goes out and the whole tracking is done live. So, of course, you are familiar when the tracking is done live, the treatment is in real time. And therefore, here is an example of organization using design thinking for creating products that are more user centric. And here I would address one of our good friends who had said it's about how the package happens. So, friends, design thinking just does not work on the uh, surface level. Yes, it does work on the surface level, but it also works at a functional level. How do we make things easy? How do we simplify those? So it is both at a functional level and at a form level. When we say form, it's about how it looks and uh, feels and when we hold it. But at a functional level, is it simplified in serving the purpose? So here is one another example of how design thinking works in it. Now coming to uh, the uh, uh, second part of the session where we are going to talk about uh, how do you approach. So the first part was uh, that uh, the need for design thinking. So what is design thinking and why is design thinking needed uh, in the healthcare sector or the pharma sector? And I'm sure now by now uh, you have very well understood the, the impact of design thinking uh, that it is going to have on the healthcare sector. So friends here, before I get into the next section, which is taking you through, uh, how do you go about uh, design thinking? So for before we get into that, let's take a two minute and I would like each one of you to identify one challenge or a problem or a, a situation which you want to solve. 
it could be your real project that you are doing right now yeah because uh, what i want to do is while i take you through this process i want you to apply so be ready with the paper pencil and all uh, therefore uh, i was i forgot to tell hardik bhai before that my session is more mostly hands on because i believe uh, that uh, learning by doing is the best way of learning so uh, requesting all of you to get your paper and pencil ready and please identify one problem uh, which you want to solve yeah so let us take that problem and use design thinking how you can solve that that would be and if i am able to contribute in next 45 minutes to that i will feel that i have been able to do justice to the session otherwise it is all talking and therefore and that uh, is fine you would have understood so before we move to the next section friends quickly any uh, views or opinion or thoughts on the first uh, part that we did what is design thinking and why is it needed for healthcare quick views friends uh, because we are on an online mode so in order to get your quick views what do you think about it just the first part that we have covered in about 40 minutes or so uh, any take that you may have on the first part feel free to share uh, whatever you feel like it will give me a perspective a uh, wonderful <laughs> yes uh, uh, that's wonderful avni if i if we are able to uh, try to find out an opportunity here uh, wonderful let's try to uh, find some uh, ways there of course it's a patient centric approach wonderful uh, i would say uh, dr vishali let's uh, take a broaden it a little and say that it's a a uh, stakeholder centric approach because sometime patients are one component of the whole ecosystem uh, and uh, to cite one of my good friends i'll not name him but he's one of the uh, uh, founders of the largest hospital that we have in gujarat uh, and when i was talking to him about the patient centric uh, i asked him that uh, uh, and we're very close friends so whenever we meet i ask him did you have your lunch he said nahi nahi abhi bhi lunch nahi hua hai abhi to uh, i am just and he is a cardiologist so uh, and then i told him that see we are working on a human centric approach for patients we should also be looking at something for the doctors because if you are uh, so uh, therefore design thinking uh, is user but therefore uh, we should address it as stakeholder because while we create solution for the patients we should also look at how is that going to impact the doctor how is it going to impact the healthcare other service providers yeah so uh, it's therefore stakeholder perspective uh, wonderful it's uh, yeah uh, so uh, hardik bhai again you are completely correct but i my request uh, let's begin with desirability feasibility and viability <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so human need comes first i'll keep on repeating that because i know we all are so tuned in the way we think but when i want to drill the concept of design thinking you no know, so that in the sleep also you are able to address it it will always begin by a human need first is the human need then technological feasibility and then impact or business viability yeah wonderful uh, mithil uh, i think there are some very good views that you have also shared here uh yeah aesthetic uh, i would uh, the word that you have used aesthetic is uh, very important because somebody had said how things look uh, i would say it's important but i would follow the principle of design and the design principle says form follows function again i'll repeat form follows function so function comes first so how is our device providing a function is more important than how the device looks so aesthetics come second first comes so as steve jobs said design is not about how things look design is how the pro problem gets solved so that is the first level how we are able to solve a problem okay so now i think some of you are giving me some uh, interesting challenges uh i would say therefore let's quickly jump on to uh, the session ahead so uh, thanks friends it i feel that you have understood the first part that is what is design thinking and the need of design thinking so let's uh, begin uh, how do we approach design thinking 
so uh, here let's begin so when we talk about design thinking if you remember we said first thing comes understand so let us take that you have already understood as some of you have given the problem that means some of you have already understood the context you have understood and constructed a little bit of hypothesis around what is the need so let's now begin at the step which is observation so the first step here of observation i would like to show you a quick video uh, which will make this uh, concept even more easier and simpler and you would be surprised like i was when i uh, saw this uh, uh, the case study and i was really uh, really surprised that for years how is it that we were not able to comprehend such a simple thing so please see this uh, it will clear uh, some of the interesting uh, uh, questions there so i'll just play this for you uh, yeah just a second i'm just going to play this for you okay uh, let me put the volume and things in perspective uh, okay uh, so while i play, play this friends if you are able to have any challenge do let me know otherwise we let's watch this quick video about the impact of observation the first step of design thinking is the second first is understand second is observe so here i am starting uh, the video okay are you able to see the screen are you able to see the screen yes sir yes, yes sir yes, okay. Sir. okay perfect so let me play this uh, and let's see what role does uh, observation play and how important it is just a second about 10 years ago we got approached by one of the largest uh, oral health care companies in America, a company you've probably heard of called Oral-B, and they said, look, we'd like a new kid's toothbrush because ours is starting to get commoditized. It looks like a lot of kids' toothbrushes out there, and you can't have that. We want to be special, right? So we say, okay, we'll do this. We want to go out in the field and do some field research. And they're kind of not sure about that. Like, it's not rocket science. We're talking about kids brushing their teeth. How hard could that be, right? They would really like us to stop fooling around and start designing, right? But we want to go through this process, this observation process, because we think almost always you can spot opportunities. And so we go out, and we're on like the first day of observations, and we make a small discovery. The small discovery you make is that Every kid's toothbrush in the history of the world has had the same implicit assumption. It's a logical assumption. It just isn't exactly right, which is the assumption always was parents have big hands, kids have small hands. And so when you want to make the kid's version, make it like the parent's brush, only smaller and skinnier. Perfectly logical until you go out in the field, until you actually watch humans, little tiny humans, while we're brushing their teeth. And what you notice right away, you get a five-year-old boy brushing his teeth, he's not holding his toothbrush in his fingertips the way mom and dad do, he's fisting it. He's holding it like this because he doesn't have the dexterity, he doesn't have the fine motor controls that his parents have, and so he's gotta hold it like this. In fact, the other thing he does is he holds the brush too far up very frequently, and so he's punching himself in the face as he's trying to brush his teeth, and we solved that problem too, but the main thing was, came back in the field and said, uh-oh, kids don't need little skinny toothbrushes, kids need big fat toothbrushes, right? Let's make them big fat squishy toothbrushes. And you may have noticed, now every toothbrush company in the world makes these, but our, our client reports that after we made that little tiny discovery out in the field, sitting in a bathroom watching a five-year-old boy brush his teeth, they had the best selling kids toothbrush in the world for 18 months. So when you think about power, when you think about you know, credibility, if you could go out in the field and do that observation and come up with that finding, and your company, your organization was the best in its field for 18 months afterwards, would that be worth it? I think that would be worth it. And so that's this message about think like a traveler, be an anthropologist, use your powers of observation, have that part of your brain turned up as high as you can uh, all, all along. Okay, friends. 
So, so I hope uh, you could see the power of an impact of a simple uh, thing that we were talking here is a uh, toothbrush. And if, if you see uh, that such a simple uh, observation and uh, look at, and therefore what happens friends, and uh, that's why design thinking succeeds, is that when we look at the first step of uh, design thinking, we tend to look at observation with a fresh eye. So uh, now let's get into the, uh, to the, uh, uh, how do we approach design thinking? Okay, so uh, I'll just share the screen again. Yeah, so here we are. So this we saw is the first step is uh, observation. But many of you would say that, okay, we may go to the field, but how do we observe? Because many a time we'll not be able to see what uh, is the hidden, Truth here it was that people looked at the children and found that they, the way they were holding the toothbrush and the way they were brushing the teeth, they could actually dissect that. But is there a method that we can use? So here, let me share with you the method that we use. So right now we are going to cover two aspects uh, in this session. The one is first is observation and second is empathy. So let's begin with observation and I'm sure you are ready with your paper and pencil. So I hope you uh, now let's do the first exercise. And the first exercise begins with uh, when you want to solve your problem, you need to use a beginner's mindset. So friends, what do you think is a beginner's mindset? And you saw the whole problem for years. We were children were using that brush because we thought that they just are smaller. Uh, they are kids and therefore we just make the brush smaller. That's so not solving the problem. So what do you think is a beginner's mindset? Anyone there? If I can uh, see something on the chat, anyone? Uh, sorry. Yeah, anyone? What's a beginner's mindset? We need a beginner's mindset. What do you think is a beginner's mindset? And that photo itself uh, told a little bit about what do you think is a beginner's mindset? Yeah, quickly, friends, what do you think? You can put it on the chat. Uh, what do you think is a beginner's mindset? Excellent. So Ruby has uh, both. I think the first two answers have uh, greatly appreciate that you have right hit uh, the nail on the head. These are the two things. Don't we don't please go out with preconceived notion. And second is children are, have curiosity. So as uh, design thinkers and uh, solution providers now, we will need to uh, take this approach for the simple reason that for years that we have been used to a certain practice. Therefore, whenever we again go out in the field, we are never able to look at the situation from uh, the first perspective or the original perspective. OK, so thanks, friends. Uh, I'm trying to see as interactive we can be. <clears throat> Uh, so that's the beginner's mindset. After doing uh, that, now let's get into when we go to the field, we want to get some deep insights. We want to get insights which are hidden. So like uh, we'll have to be like Sherlock Holmes uh, to get those insights. Now, how do we be like Sherlock Holmes? So the first thing I would want you to do, friends, is the problem that uh, or the area you have chosen. Please list the stakeholders who do you, you think would be important in the problem that is being uh, that you are addressing. So, for example, if it is a patient related thing, then is it the patient? Is it the hospital infrastructure? Is it the doctor? Is it the attendant? Is it the person, family members who are coming? Is it government as a stakeholder? So quickly, let's make a list of top five stakeholders and uh, I would request one of our team members from Hardik Bay or someone, if you can, because while I'm sharing the screen, I am not able to see the chat. So I would request that uh, the moment you have written five, you can just say that done. So we move on. Let's quickly make a list of five stakeholders that you think would be important in your, the problem that you have selected uh, would be very important five stakeholders later on you can expand the stakeholders more but today let us just keep it uh, to five sta stakeholders for this exercise yeah uh, sir there is patient doctor nurse yes 
care excellent so, excellent so uh, that's wonderful so you have done let's move uh, on i hope friends uh, others have also done care so we'll, then policy maker wonderful so i as you can see friends if all of you start to share you will suddenly realize that stakeholders for your problems are different than the other friends depending on the kind of problem that we have selected so that's wonderful uh, i hope all of you have written down the first five stakeholders yeah so we move on uh, now here is an example when we look at several stakeholders sometimes the question is how deep should we look at the stakeholder so here if you see friends the example uh, within the uh, uh, governance system or a health hospital system there are so many stakeholders in one uh, position or if you see a government teaching hospital there could be so many different uh, stakeholders now we may consider administration as one or doctors at one but if you look at within that there are uh, different stakeholders so while we do design thinking we go to this depth to find out that who all can be the stakeholders you no know? so the purpose of showing this was that while you identify a stakeholder let's go deeper so let's take a one minute and can you identify now one step deeper that who could be also some stakeholders for addressing your problem yeah now some of you who have found a research problem for you it could be the stakeholders could be uh, other research organization whom you want to partner with because you may not have the entire know how or you may want to collaborate with uh, an organization that can help you for prototyping your solution like creating a uh, tangible product out of it or a drug out of it or you may want to collaborate with a uh, process organization like we are that uh, specialize in this whole project management approach of design thinking yeah so let's quickly take a minute and add some one or two more stakeholders yeah. that you think could be deeper Uh, yeah. manuf and manufacturers sir excellent excellent now uh, uh, i'm sorry but i'm not able to actually know who is speaking so uh, uh, there but i'll uh, what i uh, whoever is uh, sharing uh, i would say in the manufacturers now there are categories of manufacturers for example do we need a high end manufacturing equipment like a, a proper machine uh, 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 called cad based machine or do we need a simple workshop machine would be fine so uh, as you can see we are now categorizing the stakeholders in the process and not narrowing it down to specifics yeah so we are going broad all the stakeholders then we are going specific then again we will look at come out of the process and see oh have i addressed everyone and look at it broad and then again go specific at the stakeholder wonderful so i hope friends you have done this part let's move on yeah can we move on uh, yes sir then uh, sir yes sir yeah. yeah wonderful so which means that i uh, see uh, of course uh, as i said we are playing a t10 so <laughs> uh, and therefore the speed is important i hope you get the essence of the process it's not that in 45 minutes i'll be able to help you get a solution but if we are able to Uh, get the process correct then later on during the day or in the coming weeks you could use the same process so first thing is stakeholder list second going deeper into the stakeholder uh, refining whom do i need and then again going broader that again let me look at the whole scenario and identify so iterative process of broad and narrow or in the stakeholder list okay once we have done that then this is one of the easy framework but there are many this is one of the used frameworks that is popular in gujarat that's why i'm sharing you with you but uh, there are other frameworks i'll share also now what do we do here is when we say this framework of activities environment interaction objects and users when we say we have to observe we look at what are the activities involved in the process so please think about some of the activities that you think are key 
in your problem that you have selected. So, for example, somebody was saying dialysis, then the activities would be related to dialysis. For example, does a patient have to come to a healthcare facility? Then that is one activity that patient has to come there. Or is it that do we have facility where uh, the patient can stay wherever he is and we don't need to create a discomfort? But those are the activities. And when they come, do they have to wait for how long? Then who is the first person that meet? they meet? Then what is the kind of uh, uh, forms that they have to fill before the whole process in order to know the vital statistics for that individual? And then we go further. So what we do is we list the activities. We also look at an environment. Like I said, that is it being administered in a certain controlled environment? Like, for example, I'll give you one very simple example. Just two days back, one of my friends uh, uh, was diagnosed with the current disease that's going on. And unfortunately, the hospitals didn't have the bed. Uh, so what he had to do is he had to get into a daycare. So because they said that we can give you a person who can be at home, but we are not very confident whether that you'd be comfortable with that. So while he's being administered the medicine, he is there in the hospital during the daycare, which means now the environment is important in which we are administering certain kind of treatment or drug. So we look at the environment. The third is interaction. What kind of interactions happen during that whole process that you are creating? Uh, so, uh, uh, like, for example, in uh, dialysis, what kind of interaction happen between different people or between uh, the patient and the environment or the patient and the ecosystem. Like you just saw the example I was giving, uh, the interaction could be that uh, the person is to be administered something. So the interaction is only a five minute thing, but later on he has to be checked that whether things are fine. So the interaction means that also is the patient continuously connected with the system by some kind of electronic device. That's also an interaction. Then we come to what objects are needed in the kind of uh, problem or domain that you have chosen. What are the objects that are there that will play a role in the whole process? So is there some kind of equipment, some kind of other uh, simple in terms of diagnosis? We say that is the uh, doctor's room in which diagnosis happen? Is it designed in a way that all the objects put there are uh, facilitating the kind of uh, speed and efficiency and preciseness in which diagnosis should happen. So uh, that's the kind of object. And of course, Lars is the uh, user. Now here you see the difference, friends. Previously, we were talking stakeholders. Now here the term has come user. The reason is now we are narrowing down to looking at this framework for each stakeholder. Yeah, so please don't misunderstand. Uh, uh, when we listed the stakeholder, we made it broad and narrow. Now we are saying for each stakeholder, let's create this kind of framework. So if you have listed five stakeholders, maybe you will have five different you know, such frameworks. Okay. Now somebody may say that, okay, uh, this is fine. I have looked at this, this. I want to dig deeper. Yeah, okay. Can, can I move on, friends? Because of lack of time, uh, I hope you are getting the process and simultaneously some things you are writing down under each head. Yeah, can I move on? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, great. So and now other approaches, friends, and these are all open source, so don't worry. You can go to the net and find out. Depending on the kind, if you are following a product development, this would be good. If you're looking at service, then the framework of poems is useful, which is people, objects, environment, messages, and services. So the same framework becomes poems. Yeah. So I hope you get it. There are many open source on the net. You can easily find out observation techniques. Yeah. So th these are there. Now, what do we do? Now, let's quickly come back to our exercise. And I would suggest let's take one activity or two activities for that you have identified here. And write down the technology or the technique that is currently being used behind it. And while you write this, just think about it. Uh, is there a problem with the current technique or the method? If so, what is it? Yeah, let's take one example quickly.
so let's take the first activity and write down the technique or the technology currently being used behind it if you are doing a research project friends then it will be the current activity whatever it is and the current technology or technique that is being used currently how is it being addressed since you are doing research you are finding new method but currently how is it being done yeah same is for hospital healthcare services what are the activity and technology behind it so everyone has written one friends yes sir wonderful wonderful let's move on now we come to process and system so you see here these are activities which are the general activities that happen but if we look at a larger healthcare system there are processes and system for example the current vaccine then when it will come out it will have to be administered what kind of a system will be developed in order to administer it who will be getting first what kind of procedures will be created will there be some kind of uh, back end like for example one simple example i can give you in the healthcare and most of you must have experience whenever there is a change in duty in a hospital of nurses uh, you must have observed that they they uh, talk to each other and start to document the previous uh, records of the patient and explain the same to the incoming nurse and it had been this study was done in london where they were trying to find out that what is the problem there so they found that sometimes there is a gap in information that remains and the second bigger thing was that it almost takes 35 to 40 minutes to actually pass on all the information from one person to another nurse to the incoming so they thought can we do something which can be very transparent and so they created a very simple app like a format in which the entire process was documented and now look at the beauty it was not just with the nurse and one nurse to another this whole document call also be taken up at the app of a uh, patient's relative so uh, it is not just that the nurse is shifting the data it that data is also with the uh, patient's relatives who can see that oh this is the kind of treatment that happened this is where we are moving this is what was administered so it's being made so transparent and easy and this one simple process reduced the time from that 35 40 minutes to as less as 5 minutes now you see the beauty of so let's quickly list the process or the system at least one in that you problem that you have identified let's list one of the process and system and currently what technology or technique is behind it let's take a minute and do that sir in our academic online attendance system absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah. nowadays i am sure you are familiar that uh, they have also identified now eyeball tracking mechanism so what they are trying to say is that if you look at the uh, this uh, the computer will uh, quickly take photographs of the people who are sitting students and their eyeballs will be tracked to see whether they are really paying attention or not <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's going to that level i don't prescribe it because that's going too far but uh, of course uh, that's how the technology is playing a role wonderful so i hope uh, we have listed the first process and the technology or system behind it sometime as i mentioned the system is simple paperwork also so don't misunderstand it's not technology it is about processes and systems that exist today and is there a gap there is there a problem that we have related to process and the system yeah okay so let's move on now just to give you an example previously we looked at activities now in process and system in a hospital or healthcare service all these actually each of these actually form a process and a system so you can see that it's such a complex and if you want to pick up any one like a laboratory and x ray that whole system can have its all processes and system defined accordingly and if we are working on that aspect or the nursing service like i gave an example it could have its own set of process and systems and we need to therefore study and make a list of process system what's the technology behind and is there a gap there okay so having done that again the same process and system defined further 
um, in of course uh, research goes another component uh, this is just for the medical services but for each there will be a separate aspect like here no opd and ipd or emergency uh, how does and therefore what why why we do this is once you know the system or service or you have defined then where is the gap is the gap here you are finding is the gap here or is the gap uh, while the person is being discharged which is uh, taking let's say an hour or two hours where is the gap so what why we are doing this whole exercise is through the activities process and system we are trying to identify where are the gaps and so that we can come up with a proper solution around the same yeah right now our aim friend is to find the root cause of the problem yeah okay i'll skip this whatever data thou you collect is then put up into this kind of a format on a large uh, piece uh, i'll also show you how it's done in hospital sometime this research on a big wall we put up all the data and then we group the data together what happens by grouping is you are able to identify the problem areas once all this data has come together so i hope friends you got first we make a list of stakeholder then for each stakeholder we do this exercise then we look at activities uh, and then we look at process and system and so the data sometime becomes very large so we want to create that data into clusters or grouping of the data to see which all big sections are the ones which we should look at yeah once we have done that okay here quick uh, thanks so as we have gone through design thinking here is a uh, and a uh, quick example what do you think is the problem here what do you think uh, do you see is a problem here there are many things that you will see as problems but which is the one that you would want to identify heart problem uh, okay no not not the problem of the patient but uh, a problem in the process the whole thing here what do you see as a challenge okay let me make it simple because of lack of time what do you think is the problem the doctor is facing here the doctor too many instruments and wires wonderful wonderful so you see that when this kind of a project was undertaken uh, in design thinking they saw that look at the way the doctor is holding this equipment and if an op this kind of an operation is going to take about 45 minutes to 1 hour look at how he will feel what will happen to his hands uh, if he has to hold the equipment with this kind of wire so in design thinking look at how quickly a solution came about uh, like somebody said if you were to hold this equipment like this so quickly they made something like this and told the doctor that if we gave you something like this will it be better than this so the doctor said yes of course that looks great and then came the final device so this is the final device that finally got created and you can see the ease with which the doctor can hold the thing and now if he has to operate it's uh, there this is the power of observation i am showing again like we sh saw in the toothbrush here is a medical device and we can see that how by observing this whole scenario one was able to identify the problem so if you see that that is the problem is in the object and the way it is the person interaction so you see uh, if you use aiou it is activities what activity it's the operation being done what is the objects here and how the interaction is happening between the object and human doctor and object and the patient so they saw that oh there is a problem there and once they identified this problem and they then were able to give this kind of a solution yeah okay now let's dig deeper the last 5 uh, 7 minutes uh, as i said uh, speed is a concern today but i hope you are uh, both enjoying and uh, able to understand the process now the first once you have done the first part which is observing uh, through the tools i have shared with you the next part is we want to now talk to the people and get deeper uh, so when you talk about research projects you may be you may re be required to talk to other research associates across the world that what are they going through what are the challenges they are facing so please don't misunderstand that it is not always the end user or the stakeholder when you are doing a research project you may want to collaborate with different kind of department like you may be collaborating with chemists 
in order to understand that, uh, their perspective of it. So the next step is getting opinion. And in getting opinion, we use all the three methods. Ethnography, which is uh, by observing people and things in the real life situation and how they are behaving, that is anthropology, and in order to find out patterns. What are common patterns which are the problems that are uh, being observed? Now, many of you friends must have identified, as you have already identified a problem area, why we are doing this is to test the hypothesis that the problem that you have chosen, is that a problem or a symptom? And therefore, should we get to the root cause of the problem? So by this exercise, uh, some of the faculty members, if you are encouraging students to uh, do fresh research, they may come up with an area and then you may use the whole this process we have used observation and empathy and right articulating problem in order to uh, find out a new problem. But some of them who are already working on a problem, they can use this whole method to test whether their problem domain is uh, correctly chosen whether the perspective is correct, whether uh, the uh, problem is a symptom or the root cause. Yeah, so the same method is also used for hypothesis testing. Okay, now how do we go about empathy? So first thing that we do is create personas. What is persona? Persona is something, a profile of a patient when you create or a stakeholder, but it is more detailed and very personal in certain aspects like this. Yeah, so I'm sorry that because of lack of time, otherwise we, I would have wished you create a persona of one, but I am sure you will get the recording and later on this presentation also. So you can actually uh, do this exercise later. But what we do is we when we uh, choose the stakeholder, if you remember, you had list of stakeholder, you take one stakeholder and create the persona uh, of the stakeholder. What this does is it makes us understand about that stakeholder in detail. Many a time you will realize that when you do this exercise, we will definitely hit upon a situation where we will realize why the person is not behaving the way we want them or why the system is not working. Uh, because once we know the reality, we will know the reasons why it is not happening uh, on the field. And when we address those very reasons, you will see the change happening in the system. So this is how a persona appears. This was a rough sketch of how what all you have to collect. But finally, we document it like this. Yeah, okay. Now, once we have done that, then what do we do as a next step is we create questionnaires. And here we use Kaizen's technique of 5WNH. So 5W is, of course, as you can see, uh, uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how. We ask, we create questions that we want to ask different stakeholders. Like somebody said manufacturer you know, in the stakeholder. Now, what kind of a question do we want to ask a manufacturers about the uh, process of creation? Do we want to know the cost of creation? Do we want to know the kind of material? Do we want to know the kind of uh, time that he will take? Do we want to know where it is going to be made? And if it has to be created in mass, then uh, where should it be done? All those questions we will create. Yeah. So first we have the stakeholder. We have chosen one stakeholder, created the persona. Then we create the questions we want to ask that stakeholder. So we use the Kaizen's questions to ask the stakeholder. Now we go to the root cause, which means asking the seven whys. Now what is seven whys? Is simple root cause analysis. There are many other root cause and root cause uh, uh, techniques uh, like a fishbone diagram or lotus blossom. But one of the easiest is seven whys. What it does is that once you have understood your problem, and here I would suggest take one minute and do the root cause. Uh, identify a situation uh, that you have and just ask why do you th think the situation exists? Quickly, why do you think the situation exists? for each of the problem that you have chosen individually, why do you think that? Yeah, I hope you have found the why. Am I, are you with me? 
Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Now, my next question will be: Suppose you give me an answer. Anyone can give me an answer. The first why. Yeah, anyone can give an answer on the first why. Sir, I have selected one drug. Yes. For that particular problem, so I can say yes. that it is the physiology. Ah, uh, sorry, phys physical chemical properties of that drug. Because of the physical chemical properties of that drug, the problem is there. Wonderful. Now my next why will be: Why do you think that physiological property is a concern? You got you got what I'm saying. so the first answer you give me i ask you the next why on the answer you have given me and then when you give me the next why answer i'll again give you the next why question on the answer so what we are doing doing is as you can see on the diagram we are digging deeper by constantly asking the why question i hope you're getting it what it does is it takes us to the root cause like for example when you under, uh, take the next why you may get into the chemical composition when you look at the chemical composition and i ask you the next why you will try to say oh can i look at a different chemical composition here or create a different kind of a uh, formulation for the same so what we are doing is we are trying to isolate the problem uh, and get to the root cause of the problem this is what uh, generally the doctors do in their diagnosis uh, you know when they interact with the patients they would say okay uh, what was it and then the first answer they'll get and they'll say oh it was it something like that further so they keep digging deeper in order to see that oh are the you know, variables that answer coming through are they showing some kind of pattern or are they in isolation so we call this technique is called laddering because we are going down by ladder no so laddering technique of seven ways to find the root cause yeah so the first here was uh, we do the 5 w n h we create question and ask the person once we have got some answer we do a root cause on the problem now let's and all this is happening through different interviewing techniques like when we how do we talk to the stakeholders it could be a group interview individual and those who are doing research like uh, right now hardik bhai mentioned there it may be interesting to take a view about formulation from an expert what would be his or her perspective on it and if we take it from a different domain like for example uh, people in uh, uh biomedical domain or uh, chemi chemical domain as such what would be their opinion about the formulation that we are talking about does it work is there a different kind of formulation that they have used in the past so we do this interviewing technique in depth in order to get to the root cause of the problem yeah uh, i'll skip this because then it will create this is important for the last part i want to cover i said no that uh, you can create this kind of uh, structure so here you see that the data that you have collected is put up in this manner on an entire wall in terms of different findings and different thing now let me give you an example here is an example of how all the data was collected around chemotherapy uh, experience and flow and uh, i think i have yeah here it is so i'll show you this example of philips that uh, so if you see here uh, we are seeing uh, like let us take one stakeholder so we have taken one stakeholder and we are seeing what are all the activities that a person goes through you see all these are activities and through these activities we are creating taking photographs and listing the activities or uh, the systems and the processes for this stakeholder same way we take the next stakeholder and we create the entire process and system we take the third sometime we take only one stakeholder and take it through like suppose it's a patient then we are taking through the entire thing or a group if it's a lab we are taking what would be the uh, process activities processes systems related to the lab or and such so this way we are able to create a customer a journey map we call or a, a patient journey map or a stakeholder journey map specifically for chemotherapy now some of you who are doing research can actually create a research flow diagram this is nothing different than the flow diagram we create but the key part here is we are talking to the people related to 
the situation that they are facing. So if it's a patient, we are talking, remember, stakeholder, then we said activities, processes, and then found the gaps there. Then we talked to them, created the questionnaire, talked to them, what are the challenges? Then we did the root cause analysis, laddering, again got answers. All that is put in a diagrammatic manner in terms of emotions and feelings that the people are going through. What are the challenges and, uh, that they are going through is then documented in this flow. And here is, if you see, uh, that uh, here is an example of uh, Philips specifically if you look at for medication purpose and the example here is for uh, rheumatic arthritis. Uh, and in rheumatic arthritis, they were trying to, this was the project, I can share this, uh, it's open source later on you can read, but if you see, read this part, that's very interesting. The beauty of the experience flow, which is this uh, uh, approach, is that it focuses on the person and not the disease. It sounds very simple, but it's not always how the medical world sees things. Through the focus group, we saw how people coped with their disease in the context of their lives, like, for example, building relations, planning a family, continuing their work. While we had tended to focus on healthcare environment, we realized that 99% of the experience of the patient is outside that space. So if we see uh, that, and that's where the problem needs to be addressed. Seeing the patient journey on a huge experience flow poster was so engaging for the team. The energy and interest and in understanding it provoked it uh, uh, almost instantly. So this whole process that I showed you of creating this kind of a situation uh, flow, which is based on the discussion with stakeholders, now, another good thing that happens while you have put all these different stakeholders here, like manufacturer and the kind of government uh, uh, department, how they will look at it, or the doctors and the patient, then we will see overlaps of the gaps that are there. And that gives us a clear understanding of where the uh, problem could be. Even in the process of creation of a drug, you will see, like, for example, you can create the same experience for flow for different organizations doing the same research. So here the stakeholders become different organization or different doctors working on the same situation. And if you see and create this overlap, it makes it very interesting, the practices, uh, the processes people are using and how it will impact. So having done that, um, here was an example. What we do now is again, we collect all that data like we did before by observing. Here we have collected the data by talking to the people, which is empathy. And once we have collected all this, we try to create a and formulate. So I'll share this one last example and stop with that. Uh, uh, so this is a very brilliant uh, case study which was done. Uh, and uh, uh, and this was uh, uh, a classic example of uh, where uh, young children, when they used to come to a hospital uh, for an MRI, what do you think is the challenge? What do you think when the young children are brought for an MRI, uh, what are, is the challenge that you feel? Yeah, friends, what do you think is the challenge? When a child is brought for an MRI, what do you think is the problem? They have fear, fear like... Uh... Excellent. So one is they have fear. Wonderful. Wonderful. What's the second thing? So because of the fear, what happens? Wonderful. The first answer is completely correct because the machine is such large and makes so much noise. Children and of course, children coming to hospital itself is a, a whole different exercise. But if they are coming here, of course, the first thing is fear. The second thing is uh, children are very playful sometimes or in fear, they will not remain steady. So an MRI can only happen when they are steady. So uh, what used to happen, and it's still a practice at many places, that when children are brought for an MRI, they are given a sedative. And uh, through that sedative, they are made to sleep. 
and then an MRI is done so that uh, uh, the right uh, imaging can happen. So this was a challenge that came from one of the person, Douglas, at uh, uh, General Electric, uh, that he was told by this challenge by uh, Pittsburgh uh, uh, Hospital, uh, which had the children care division, that we are facing this problem. And therefore, what happens is, because we have so much rush, we have to administer a drug to the child, then the child sleeps, then we have to wait till he falls asleep and then take him to his MRI. Now there are two, three problems here. One is being administered a drug. Second, uh, the time that uh, will be wasted in put, giving the sedative and putting him to sleep and then they doing the MRI. So they thought, what can we do differently? So they created, as I shared, they used the entire process, look at the stakeholders like parents and all other stakeholders and found that what is that children really like to do is, and all of us know that children love to play. So what they did is, if you see this on the next one, this is even better. What they created is that the whole exercise uh, of MRI uh, uh, imaging was created like a game. And the medical practitioner, the person who would uh, tell the child will had a whole script around the game that what is the entire game going to be like. And then they told the children that while you go into this game, so if you can see, they created many different games. This was a pirate game. This is a game where they are talking about under the sea uh, activity. This is more of a comic uh, uh, cartoon game. So when they created this game, the children would uh, be told that, see, you are now playing this game and you have to uh, uh, identify. So if you see the screen here, uh, the moment this they will be taken for an MRI and be at that position, they are told that you need to count a certain number of things. And based on that, you would get the rewards for this specific game. Now, we all know that when a child or any one of us pays attention and concentrates to count, they be we become extremely steady because we are counting. So what happened is that while this process was being used, so if you see the entire environment got created like that and when the imaging was done, they found that they were able to save upon 90% of the time and energy and not give any sedative. And this whole method was is doing wonders in the world simply because they just turned around the whole concept of imaging into a fun-based game. Now, here is a radical innovation that they have done in a process. And in the, uh, in the, on the way, they have saved upon the whole cost of giving sedative, the time that hospital has to give, and through a game. Uh, the only uh, funny and interesting part, uh, which is uh, uh, the challenge now they are facing, is that the children tell that we want to go back and play the next game. So, friends, with that, I would stop here. Uh, and uh, 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 I would like to cite. So, there were some, I had some few slides more, but I think uh, for the time and uh, the kind of data that you can absorb, I think this much would be uh, more than uh, requisite. So let's quickly uh, recap. Uh, uh, and if we look at what we could cover in this one and a half hour is uh, what is design thinking? So design thinking is a human centric approach starts with a need of a citizen, a user, a stakeholder. Now, please don't misunderstand. It's not always patient. Sometimes the, uh, uh, the stakeholder can also be a machine manufacturer who may need a help of a doctor to make a better equipment. So he is also and but we are talking to that person to get his problem. So first is we find his problem. How do we find by understanding the situation, then by observation techniques that I shared with you. And then by empathy, which are techniques like 5WNH and laddering to get to the root of the problem. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the, uh, the this called desirability, which means the human understanding human need. The second part is once we get the need, then we look at what are the technology and the technique that are uh, available to us uh, and feasible. And that is why, friends, if you would have noticed, we put 
the activity and the technology or technique in front of it so every time we look at activity process and system or the equipments we look at what is the current technology or technique so if we want to bring innovation we know that oh here is the technology that we need to replace by something else so that's the second part technology and the third part is the business impact that is uh, whether feasibility of it uh, as for viability of the entire proposition so impact of business which could be money or the kind of impact as you saw just in the last example of mri that the impact was so huge that now they are saving 90% Uh, of the drugs that were given and also the time the second impact that you saw in the toothbrush was that for 18 months oral b remained the number one toothbrush in the world now think about the money that they would have got earned through that 18 month market leadership or in the same context let's think about the current situation we are in if the and we all know the vaccine that will come out earlier and will be successful what impact will it have so we are measuring the impact against the uh, the uh, uh, the financial impact and also the long term impact i'm sure many of you would still be thinking like i am thinking that after taking the vaccine what would be the impact after 3 to 5 years of that vaccine on me i'm still worried about it because of the kind of study that is currently happening so uh, many of us are thinking in that line also how are the government how is the vaccine people who are creating it trying to create a transparency to tell us that this is the way that you don't need to worry this we have taken the factor this is all important in a citizens perspective otherwise many people will uh, create their own inferences and may have their own challenges so this whole method friends i hope uh, uh, since it was one and a half hours uh, this is all that i could uh, share in today's time normally when we work with organizations like some of the names i shared when we work it normally takes 3 months to 6 months to apply this whole process so the whole method of finding a problem and it takes almost 2 to 3 months uh, doing this uh, it's like six sigma it's a methodology it's an approach it's a project management approach so please do not uh, so one last slide which i wanted to share which is very important do not think that design thinking is a theory it cannot be taught it can be practiced so while we are teach, uh, sharing with our students design thinking the best would be that we also become a part of their project team and tell them that we will do this project together then is the real learning of design thinking otherwise so that is one second uh, is that it needs a mindset for uh, effort and but that i am confident because all of you are Uh, in the healthcare domain where the maximum uh, what you believe is an effort whereas in other disciplines when we do the design thinking we have to really tell them to be rigorous in the process and approach like the methodologies i shared sometimes students come back and say that we have done research to two stakeholders we have met we have done everything observation then we have to tell them no there are at least 20 more you need to meet so it is not a quick fix solution it's a process it's a methodology and it's an approach so i hope friends i've been able to do little bit of justice to this topic of design thinking for healthcare and pharmacy uh i'll uh, my email uh, or some of you who may want to i have an open invitation to our uh, friends at anand pharmacy college that if you have any uh, interesting project that you would want to uh the, it's actually a philanthropic activity there's no cost involved so if you want some of the students to take up this approach and visit us uh, uh, uh at uh, amdabad we have a studio here or we can even connect online and uh, uh discuss and help the students or the uh, researchers uh, through this method so open invitation friends to you that uh, we'll be more than happy to work with you and Uh, for the benefit of society so thanks i'll rest it here yeah uh thank you very much sir for interactive session and uh, discussion regarding all these three circles of design thinking focusing on the framework of the observation observation techniques and all that with live examples and thank you sir for honoring us with your presence uh
That's so nice of you, uh, Dr. Yeah. Chetna and uh, Hardik Bhai. I hope it was meaningful. At the end yes, of the day, the, what uh, you are doing is uh, commendable. Very Anyone? interactive section, sir. So I don't think so that uh, uh, any of our delegate have any questions. Uh, and uh, uh, there are uh, very good feedbacks from the delegates so that you can ch check in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, thankful for each one of you to be there and participating. As I said, this is a methodology. So the more we practice, the better we will become. It's not a theory. Uh, we cannot teach it. So I was tried my level best not to be more... Uh, more like a professor uh, it was more like with you trying to solve a problem that we have at hand uh, so friends if any one of you would want to connect please feel free through the institution or you can connect over linkedin uh, i'll be more than happy to help you yeah, thanks thank uh, you. Ji and uh, thanks Hardik Bhai yes, for arranging this session yeah. thank you very much sir again on behalf